In this tutorial, we're going to talk about scopes. We look at some of the important objects that we have used in our uh, servlet example, and uh, we'll try to understand the scopes of those objects. Now, here's a snippet of our uh, servlet that we wrote in our earlier tutorials. It's a very simple servlet. It just has a do get method, and uh, it's taking a request object and a response object. There's some code inside to read something out of the response, I mean the request object, and then print to the response object. Now what are the important objects that we see here? Uh, of course the request and the response, we just saw this. And then uh, another object is the servlet itself. We do not see any static method. So this servlet class itself has to be instantiated as an object for this do get method to be called. So uh, we have the request and the response objects and the servlet object itself. Now, when, when are these created and when are these uh, destroyed? Before we go to the when, uh, the, another question we need to answer is who creates them and who destroys them? The answer is Tomcat. We know that uh, the web application is deployed in the Tomcat container. So uh, the servlet runs inside the Tomcat container itself. So the Tomcat container takes care of initializing the servlet. It takes care of creating objects of the servlet. And then it also takes care of creating those request and response objects we saw earlier. So another point to note here is that every class that we use that we have not explicitly written is provided by uh, Tomcat. When I say every, of course, there are some, uh, I mean, a lot of classes that are, you know, libraries that we use, uh, especially the Java EE libraries. But then the classes that we saw earlier, the request and the response, they are actually Tomcat's implementations. So uh, they are the HTTP servlet request and the HTTP servlet response. Uh, we saw this uh, diagram in our earlier tutorial when the browser makes a HTTP request, there are these two objects generated, a request object and a response object. The request object contains data about the request that was uh, initiated by the browser. And the response object is a blank object. It's a clean slate that is uh, generated by Tomcat. And both these objects are passed to the, uh, to the servlet inside the web application. So the request object is required by the servlet in order to understand what exactly is requested by the browser. Uh, it'll have details about uh, the request itself, the parameters, and uh, a lot of other metadata related to the request. We'll, uh, we'll look at that later. But uh, this does contain all the information required by the servlet in order to understand what exactly the request is. And the response object, as I said, it's a clean slate that is handed over to the servlet for the servlet to write whatever response it needs to write. Now, uh, after executing this servlet, this is, this is again our code, okay? We have written this servlet class and this object has been initialized by uh, Tomcat. So this code that we have written, the do get method runs and then it pulls data from the request writes response to this response object and then it completes execution. Now the response object is sent as HTML by Tomcat back to the browser. So again, Tomcat creates the request and the response. Now the thing to remember here is, say there is another browser over here which makes a call to the same URL so that the same uh, servlet has to execute then Tomcat creates a new request and a new response object. And uh, say this browser, the first browser again creates, you know, makes another request. It makes uh, the same request for the second time. Tomcat does not reuse the objects. It creates a new request and a new response object. So every time there is a URL that's accessed, the request and response objects are created and they're handed out to the do get or the do post methods of that servlet. So request and response objects are created per access. But how about the servlet object itself? The servlet object is not created per access. Say, uh, you know, there are five browser, five uh, browser windows or five different clients uh, accessing the URLs that serve by the same servlet. That does not mean that there are five different objects of the servlet. 
So what happens is that uh, servlet objects are reused. They're not created per access. The way it works is they have different servlet threads that address these requests. They are not different instances. Uh, this is uh, beneficial for uh, for reasons of you know using less resources. You you know this uh, instance, the Tomcat instance, does not have to create new objects, and uh, the, you know the benefits are obvious. So you have uh, hundreds and thousands of users who are accessing the same servlet. That does not mean that there is an equal number of um, servlet objects itself. What Tomcat does is it creates different threads, and then each of those threads address those different users. Okay, so the request object is created every time for every request. So uh, why is it not reused? So I'd just like to make a note about uh, the HTTP protocol being called as a stateless protocol. It's um, what stateless means is that HTTP protocol does not expect that the user and the data are remembered. Say, for example, I make a request and I pass a couple of parameters to my uh, through my request object. There's no way that the, uh, the application or the servlet remembers those parameters when I make a request the next time. So how do we make the servlet remember that? So here's a quick test uh, to understand the problem. I have the servlet here. I'm going to run this. I will be accessing the servlet, passing a parameter called new user. I hit enter, uh, I get a response, so the servlet actually picks up this parameter and uh, renders it. Now when I remove this and uh, access it again, this time it shows null because there is no value here. The earlier value that was passed is now lost. So um, this is happening because the request object is created again newly for a new access. Okay, so how do we solve this problem now? There are a lot of use cases where you would want to remember users data like um, login screen for example. You have a login screen where the user enters user ID and password. You would want to remember the user ID so that you can customize the application experience for that uh, user and um, it does not make sense to ask for the user ID every time. So in order to save user data in uh, the server memory, we need to use something called as a session object. So uh, a session object is something that Tomcat gives for us, and we can use that to save data values at some point during the you know the execution of a servlet, and then retrieve the same data in another point during the execution of a servlet. So uh, just like we have the request object here that Tomcat has provided for us, Tomcat also provides this session object for us. So in order to access a session object, we have to use a method from the request object. You can use that method to retrieve a session object from the request object. So let's do that here. We have a simple example where we take a name parameter in the request every time and then display that name back to the user. So what I'm going to do this time is I will also save this into the session object so that even though the user does not enter a name parameter later, as long as he has entered it once before, the session object will have that name and we can pull out that name out of the session object. So a session object is, is of type HTTP session. So I will declare an object of type HTTP session equals request dot get session. I will use this method and I will get the session object. As I told you, this is an object which Tomcat provides for us. Now let me do the import. Now I can put any value into the session object here and then uh, this will remain across multiple executions of this to get. So let me put this name parameter here. We've already used a string variable to capture this name. I will place this string variable, the value of the string variable into a session. So what I'll do is I'll use session dot set attribute 
Now I need to give a name for this. I am placing this value over here and I will have to retrieve this later. So I need to provide a name that helps me retrieve this later. So I will call this saved username, which is a string. And as a second parameter, I can place the actual object here. I'm putting a string here, but I could as well put a name or any other user defined objects. So I'm going to use this username and I'm going to pass this so that this username is saved in the session. Now I will change this so that we can differentiate between the two session dot get attribute. So I need to pass the same string that I had used for saving this attribute. So I need to pass this value here so that it pulls up whatever username was saved. Because this needs to be a string. And I will cast this as a string because session.get attribute returns an object. As I told you before, we can save any object here so the return type of this is an object. Just as the value of the second parameter here is an object, you can pass any object here to a set attribute. Now this is fine, but then I don't want the name which is passed to be set here if the name is null. If the name is null, I want the session value to be pulled out but if the name is not null, I want that to be displayed and also put into the session. So I'll do a quick null check here. If username is not empty and username is not null. I need to fix the case here. So if it is, if it has some value, only then put the session. So I take the session declaration out. So here's what I'm doing again to summarize. I'm taking the username parameter and then I'm also having a session object here. Now if the username parameter is not null then I'm putting this into the session. Otherwise I'm printing the session valued username. I'll save this and let's see how this works. Now if I call just the simple servlet, both of them are null because I have not passed any value. Now if I pass a username here, let me check, the, okay it's just name, sorry about that. Okay, now I'm passing the parameter name. Now both the request and the session has a name. Now what I've done is I've taken this request and I've taken this value and I've put it into the session. Now even if I do not pass this value again, it's gonna pull this up from the session and as you can see, the request parameter is null but the data is still there in the session. So this is very handy if you wanna use a particular user data across different URL accesses so that you know you don't you don't have to pass this value every time as long as the user has passed it once it is there now I can change this if I want I can pass another value here so that goes and sits into the session object now if I do not pass this value again so that will be the new value that's there in the session so the session value remains as the last one that you've set using this session.set attribute. So you can, you can have as many attributes over here, but every particular string will have a corresponding object here. And the last value that you have, the last object that you have set for a particular string will continue to be there. And you can retrieve that value using the get attribute as many times as you want.